Welcome back. <laughs> oh, Master. I wonder what kind of dream we'll have tonight. <laughs> well, let's go together. Seek you. You awaken in a bed. You recall seeing someone at a festival, speaking to a man who seemed rather kind. He leads you into the forest, and before he attempts to kiss you, everything goes black. Now, now you're in this bed. Your clothing is open. Your body nearly exposed. The room is dark, save for a few candles that light the room. You cannot recall exactly how you got here. You just remember the festival. And then you think to yourself, you were somewhat intoxicated that night. Drinking at a festival is common. And you are sure that it wouldn't be long before you could no longer handle it. So, it is safe to assume that the kind man that you encountered brought you to your home to rest yourself. But you are not home, and you are dressed like this. You sit up, taking a look around before you stand up to look for a way out. Once you approach the door and open it, you nearly let out a scream, only for the man from the festival to place a finger against your lip. He smiles, his eyes almost as bright as those candles. You're up rather quickly. Please, sit down. I don't think you've sobered up so quickly after passing out. He leads you back to the bed, laying you down and feeling at your forehead. For some reason, seeing him in the dark is somewhat frightening. You shudder slightly, asking him a few questions. Why are you here? Why, isn't it obvious, you passed out, considering I couldn't just ask you to tell me where you lived. I found the best alternative was to bring you to my home until you sobered up. I thought for a moment that you would have kept sleeping until the sun had risen. However, you woke up rather quickly. Unfortunately, the festival is beyond over. It is very late at night. Once morning comes, I will gladly return you home. You nod, looking over everything once again. Despite this, the man still seems to frighten you for some reason. Something about him just seems ominous. You decide to ask another question about your situation. Your clothing. Ah, yes. 
You are so incredibly heated. If you continue to wear your kimono like that, you could have gotten sick from all that heat. I wouldn't want someone like you to catch their death so easily. Thus, I open your clothes enough to allow you to breathe better. Now then, will you stop asking such silly questions and get some rest? It would hurt me deeply if I find out that you got sick from staying up in your condition. You ask one last question. I... I frighten you. Now why would that be? You didn't seem to think like that at the festival. I believe you even mentioned the beauty that you couldn't seem to grasp. Darling, it seems rather rude that you would suddenly change your mind. He lifts your body up slightly having you sit against a bedpost as he looks at you. Those red eyes making you shake once again. But he grasps your hand tightly. It almost hurts. Slightly. No more shaking. It only makes me think you're either ill or that you're becoming frightened of me. I do not enjoy such a thing, especially knowing that you think that being alone with me could mean something bad for you. Do you not see I wish to help you? He gently strokes your cheek with the back of his hand a few times, you then notice the length of his nails. You almost shake again, knowing how long they are and how sharp they appear. Could you be cunt? Plead. You nearly pull away, which causes him to... Ah, sigh. Please relax. Look, I will get you something to drink. I think some tea should at least help you get some rest. He stands up, leaving the room. After you hear the footsteps go silent, you begin to leave the room, going through the strange home until you find the exit. Yet, when you open the door, you see various bodies Bloodied, mangled, practically destroyed. You didn't even leave the festival. This was an abandoned home near the grounds. Before you even scream, you feel a hand come to your mouth and drag you back inside. The man pins you to a wall and you can see from his eyes he's clearly angry. I am utterly disappointed in you. A man has a moment of kindness in wanting to aid you. Taking you into a home to care for you. And this, this is how you repay him. Truly, you should be grateful I even had the slightest thought of. You as someone as my liking. I even took the liberty to make sure you were alone. You blink, looking back towards the door, then back at him. You saw the results, I'm sure. You should know that I am nothing that would cause such a thing. Of course, unless I am pushed too far. Yet, he leans towards you. You think for a moment that he would attempt to bite you somewhere, but he instead licks your neck. You shudder as his tongue goes from your neck. From 
your neck to your cheek. As I said prior, I found you interesting. I've lived many lives. This one, however, it brings me to find such a very interesting human. Normally, I find your kind somewhat disgusting. Yet despite this flaw, you truly did catch my eye. Such a lovely voice, beautiful skin, soft hair. And your scent. He leans close to you again, this time resting his head against your shoulder. So intoxicating. He lifts his head once again, looking at you with those eyes once again. He takes your hand and takes you back to that bedroom. His grip is firm, and try as you might, you cannot bring yourself to pull away. He sits you at the foot of the bed, overlooking you and stroking your face once again. You attempt to speak, but his finger quickly silences you as it presses against your lips. Hush now. I truly cannot stand this any longer. He takes a few steps away, beginning to undress in front of you. You attempt to look away, but he grabs your cheek with his thumb and forefinger, turning your head towards him. Look at me. Do I frighten you? Does my appearance make you wish to tear your eyes from your skull? If not, if not, then I ask something much different. A much easier question for you, at least. He presses his lips against yours, kissing you once, twice, a third time, before he pulls away. Is this not the appearance of perfection, a figure worthy enough to be considered godlike with a body like mine? He takes a hold of your hand, Pressing it against his chest with skin that withstands any damage and remains so soft, almost frail, a sensation both warm and cold at once, eyes that can see into your very soul. Is this not the appearance of a man you would desire to give your life to? A man. You would wish to serve until the end of your very life. Perhaps, perhaps, if I find you even more worthy than you already are. He leans down to your ear, whispering. Perhaps I'll make you my pet, keep you by my side. Good morning. Sorry to wake us up from your dreams so suddenly. The rest of it is too steamy to be shown on YouTube. I hope you understand. Anyway, let's bring smiles to the world. CQ out. I fully believe in you, 
and you should believe in yourself too. Because you have the power and you have the strength. Hmm. You are resilient, you are strong, and you're pretty ass kicking too.